Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm continuing the series on Ham Radio for prepping, and today I'm going to be focusing on the off-center fed dipole antenna, which I've been using now for about uh, six to eight months and absolutely love it. It doesn't replace my other antenna, it just complements what it, this can do versus the other ones. So this is episode number 33, and I'm going to be talking about if you're looking for a stealth quiet, affordable wire antenna uh, that can go longer distance as well as I call do more directed oriented calls. This is a video you're going to want to watch. So if you are liking and getting value from these videos, please hit the like and the subscribe button so others can find it. And I just want to say thank you for those who are taking the time to give me comments and feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, it really motivates me to keep doing these videos. So thank you. So what's the agenda today? What is it? What is an off-center fed dipole and why use it? The difference between this and N-fed half-wave antenna and the difference between this and a regular dipole antenna? Let's talk about how it works, who sells them. And by the way, this is not a video on how to make one. There are plenty of, plenty of videos out there to do that. I'm talking about if you're going to look to buy one, this is a video that is directed more toward that. Um, I'm going to talk about the different setups and how to use it, as well as a summary uh, wrapping up the, the most important points before you walk away from this. Last year I did a video on NFED half-wave antennas, and this is the link in the description below if you want to watch it. And I get into a lot of detail about the difference between a resident and non-resident antenna, so strongly recommend if you're just stumbling upon this video that you watch that one um, to be able to see the difference between the two. But quickly, just summarizing, NFED half-wave, what are some of the advantages of it? Multi-band antenna, 6 to 160 meters, and on the Chameleon MCOM2, which I use, uh, it's a non-resident antenna. I do have one of my setups is for Envis, which allows me at, you know, 10, I think it's about 10 foot off the ground, parallel to the ground, to be able to pick up more local regional calls. It's on 20, excuse me, on 40 and 80 meters. Uh, th all the other bands, basically, I can still do fairly good long distance on it. And again, it's very configurable in how you set this thing up. So with a shorter wire of about 63 to 65 feet, uh, I can do uh, Envis, uh, inverted V, uh, sloper. I can do a bend. It's like a lot of people I know put this up under their eaves and bend it around the corner of the house, and it works very, very well. So it's a great, great antenna. But I was looking for something more. And what I was looking for is something to do more long distance and to be able to do uh, more directed calls where I can hit specific people in my MCOM group that I want to target, this one allows me to do it. So when we talk about an example of an off-center off fed uh, dipole antenna, this happens to be the Buckmaster diagram that you see in here. They're one of the options in here. A typical dipole, you know, is strictly, you know, parallel to the ground, uh, and the uh, balen is in the middle. We're off-center, just like it says, it's off-center. And depending on manufacturer, this can vary. It can be either one-third, uh, two-thirds, or something in between, 87%. And I'll get into that here in the next couple slides. But it can be either totally uh, like a dipole, or it's, you know, it's parallel to the ground, or you can have different angles between 120 to 180 degrees. You don't, you don't really want to get anything less than that. And it's going to be about 10 feet off the ground on both ends. On mine, I don't do 10 feet on the short wire. There's no way. If I have it up 32 feet, how do you get it 10 feet off the ground? So you don't. Uh, but anyhow... Uh, I'll get more into all of this here in the next few slides, but that's what you're pretty much looking at. It's not in the center. So it's a form of a dipole antenna. Um, now the feed point can vary, as I mentioned, a straight line uh, if possible on your coax. If you can get the coax going straight down here, that's great. But because of the way I have mine up, mine's off at an angle and it seems to work pretty well. And again, horizontal or inverted V is the most common way you set up this antenna. It, most of them are resident antennas, multiple bands, and the Balin is four to one typically. And again, there may be an exception out there, and you can point that out in the comments below. Tuner? Some say no, but I'm going to say yeah, because most unless you have an ideal condition and you can you know put up uh, you know poles and and set this up without any interference. But in my case, I have to work with what the trees permit me to use, and so tuner in my case was yes. So consider that, especially on certain bands, uh, excuse me, uh, like, for example, a 30 meters. Uh, they say you can do 30 meters on mine. Uh, it's like 9 to 1 on SWR, and I have to use a, a really the uh, LDG tuner to get that thing down to be able to be operable. But anyhow, the bottom line is uh, tuner, yes, on certain bands, maybe not, depending if you have ideal setup. 
So why use it versus a dipole? Well, a dipole antenna, typically you can get 40 and 20 meters because it's a resonant antenna, and it gives you a really low SWR. And believe me, it's a really, really good antenna. But the off-center fed dipole gives you additional bands, and it's uh, going to give you a slightly higher SWR, but I want the multiple bands is what I'm looking for. And it's the same or better on distance. Uh, I did whisper comparisons and uh, looked at the different antennas that are out there. And right now, to me, I think, you know, bang for the buck, it's the best antenna going today. Now, do I, does this replace my NFED uh, half-wave antenna? No. Uh, it fills the gap of what that one doesn't do. So, again, as the NFED half-wave gives me a shorter wire, multiple band, multiple configurations, and this setup, when you can see here, this is a great little guide when you're looking at uh, trying to figure out your setup when you're using an NFED half-wave here. And uh, I have both the uh, uh, Envis setup as well as the Sloper. But the off-center dipole, uh, it gives up some bands. I, I, I take that. I don't have the 80-meter band. I don't have the 160-meter band. I don't have the 30-meter band that really works well. But the wire length is compatible. Uh, the gain is I get longer distance. It's quieter. And, I, and I'm really successful at doing directed calls to people within my MCOM group. After doing my research, I, I, I settled on off-center fed dipoles as my next antenna. So I had to state, okay, what am I trying to do? What, am I, what problems am I trying to solve? And what are my goals? So I'm looking for an antenna that's as many bands as possible, 6 through 40. I want to keep the SWR readings under 3 to 1 because I can use my internal tuner built in my ICOM 7300. I want a low SNR when I'm doing my digital app so I get full decode uh, and I can operate at lower power. I want workable skip zones. I'll explain that here in just a second. Uh, my choice, obviously, is going to be a wire antenna, but I know with my tree height, with the branches available to, me, available to me, I can get it up 35 feet, but that's probably the max height I'll be able to go with my setup. And I have a wire length within the lot size. I can have the long wire terminate uh, at 65 feet or less. That's what I was looking for. And again, stealth to make, to, uh, make sure that the HOA police don't come after me. So when I talk about workable skip zones, when I first bought the antenna, uh, I did 20 meters in the morning under poor conditions, and I started to notice, like, I'm able to get more regional without necessarily skipping over that. So this was important. And at 40 meter, it's really impressive what you can see. Uh, so that I can go long distance, but I also can not lose people that are clo fairly close to me. So that was really, really important. So what do I have to work with? Different from you. So... <laughs> My current location at the bottom of a hill, multiple trees, small lot, and again, packed in with a lot of houses. If you take my utility box down here, and I have a, uh, I have underground wire that goes toward the house, it's this direction over here. But if you take that, go up 35 feet, my uh, neighbor's house we back up to, there's the road, my uh, neighbor's across the street. If you go to their porch railing height, that's 35 feet. So I'm definitely in a gully. Uh, again, with the HOA police, you know, who like to, people like to report you. Uh, I'm fortunate I have some trees, but I'm unfortunate that I'm in a corner where a lot of people walk by. So it has to be stealth. The wire antennas are up. They can't see it. And so far, so good. So my choice was uh, Palomar Engineers, the off-center fed dipole, 40 through 6 meters, uh, 500 PEP. And the reason I, I bought it, because it's a resident antenna, it's quieter, and the reason it's quieter is because it has the one-to-one -one common mode feed line choke built in uh, into the antenna itself. So this is really, really nice. Um, that was another feature. The wire length matched. I can do the termination of a long wire 10 feet off the ground within my own lot, not in my neighbor's uh, property here. Uh, so I'm going to give you right now, buyers beware, customer service issues. Uh, not only myself, I've talked to several other people, the same thing. When I was first looking at it, I had questions. I tried to email them, heard nothing. I tried to call them, voicemail. Voicemail box is full. So if, if I got it and I know two or three other people have gotten the same thing, not the best customer service. They're not the best vendor that's going to do it. There's better ones that I'm going to show you here. However, I can vouch for this particular antenna. Uh, I love it. I like it. And I would buy it again. But I just know what I'm dealing with when it comes to their uh, customer service and support. So here's how I did my setup. I took a slingshot, I took a bolt, attached a fishing line on it, and then I also took uh, orange duct tape, wrapped it around it, and I launched it up over the branch that I wanted, 
and it came all the way down to the ground. I attached string. I brought the string all the way back over. I attached the nylon rope, pulled it all the way back down to the ground, and I attached the pulley at the bottom. And uh, once I had the pulley at the bottom, I then put the rope through that and secured it on a tree. And I'll show you how I did that. Uh, I also attached, uh, at the point, the coax is on it before I pulled it back up. And I attached the shock cord before I pulled it back up. So the shock cord is here, and that stretches 100% onto the end of the insulator on the short wire. A long wire, it's long enough, it'll just drop to the ground. So once I had my uh, had the setup in, this was this was permanent, I had that secured. I pulled the, the paracord, which holds the balum over the pulley to the right height that I wanted. Uh, I was then able to then attach the shock cord to a tree to here, and I went over and put the shock cord on the long wire over on another tree. And I made sure that my um, uh, coax uh, feed line, which attaches to a utility box below, had enough slack in it that I can adjust this up and down or it can move left and right without any undue stress happening right here, right in this area and here. So this is nylon rope, which doesn't give. This this is paracord, which can it's, it's somewhat flexible, and the shock cord is 100% flexible. So hopefully that makes sense. My setup was an inverted V, and I think it's probably maybe about 120 degrees angle. But you can see the short wire is going this direction, and the long wire is going this direction. So my height, I eventually got it up, I think, to around 35 feet. started around 30, but as I mentioned earlier, the higher up I went, the better performance I was getting. I have a north to south orientation so that I can get uh, all the way up to Washington, uh, and uh, Alaska going through Canada very, very well, as well as Europe and down through Africa. Uh, wire uh, termination, the long wire, the insulator is about 10 foot up the ground. The short is going to be, uh, the insulator is about 24 to 27 feet up the ground because it's about 11 and a half feet long that's in there, but works really well. Wire length is total is about 64 feet, uh, and it works exactly what I wanted to to be able to connect to the right tree where the termination points are. And again, this is stealth. I painted this camo brown. Don't just paint it brown. You want to do camo brown, uh, which is non-reflective. That way it doesn't shine or you can't see it up there. Again, let's take a look at the setup. Rope over the limb. You can see it. This is how mine works over the limb. It comes back down. And right in here is where I attach it to the pulley. And where I taped it, I went ahead and then just put the electrical tape and uh, uh, silicon tape over that just to protect it, make sure it doesn't come undone. Uh, so rope to pulley raises uh, the transformer up and down. The original rope that holds it pretty much stays in place, but I can take that down if I have to. Then I have my short wire. I have my long wire going out, and here's another view of it. This is where you can see uh, coming over the branch up here, coming down uh, is the attached to the pulley. And then the second uh, wire going over the pulley happens right in here, going up and down. This is pretty much permanent. This is very much adjustable. The termination points in my setup is to allow two things, to obviously to secure it, but more importantly, to make adjustments. And that's why I use uh, the, the, the way my setup is right in here. So think of the shock cord as going through, for example, the eye screw. Eye screw keeps the rope off the bark, doesn't grind on it, makes it really easy pulling it up and down on it. And then the, the rope cleat right next to it, uh, for this particular one, this, this uh, paracord is holding up the pulley. Uh, is going over the pulley, not holding up the pulley. It's actually going over the pulley and holding up the the balin. Uh, but if I want to raise that or lower that quickly, make quick adjustments, this is where I do it. And this will actually go down around, and I have a, a permanently tied off down below, as well as I have this one on the uh, the short wire actually goes down and it's tied off below. But I allow for always these different cleats in there to make quick adjustments when when necessary. But when I terminate it, I have to leave enough rope uh, to be able to go to lower this thing back to the ground to service any of these points, whether it be, you know, the, the going over the, the pulley, the wires, whatever. So I'll take the extra rope that is there and I put a zip tie around it and keep it off the ground next to the tree. Now, here's an example of looking at the long wire I'm using the shock cord and I'm connected at the insulator. And so uh, the shock cord here, boy, this, this really gives. So when there's the trees pull on this thing, this thing goes back and forth easily without putting undue stress uh, at the point of connection. So what's the results compared to my MCOM2? Did I gain anything? Did I lose anything? Well, 
from trying this out, uh, based out of Raleigh, I'm now able to do directed calls, JS8, on, in Idaho, Massachusetts, Florida, Michigan, pretty easily now. So I really, really uh, am pleased with that. Um, but I'm able to still do some regional ones, like uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I didn't lose, you know, just because it's up higher, lose the, the areas around me. Uh, I, it works perfectly in 40 and 20 meters for what I'm trying to do. I've done 17 meters to uh, Utah uh, very well during the day. So, I mean, this thing works great. Typically, I'm doing anywhere from 15 to 35 watts on JS8. Um, I did whisper results, compared it, and found it to be exceptional. Um, able to get like Western Australia, which I couldn't get before, and being able to pick up the Antarctic and the Arctic circles, for example, South Africa. But I did lose some things. You know, I I, I lost the 40 meter. I lost, excuse me, the 30 meters. I lost the 80 to 160 meters. So in summary, what are some of the upsides of the off-center fed dipole? Uh, you're able to do directed calls, uh, I think, better than any of the other antennas that I have. Uh, I can do longer distance. Uh, I can get it very quiet because the one I chose has the inline feed choke. Um, the SNR uh, is acceptable because I can use my internal tuner on my ICOM 7300 to be able to work it. Uh, I did lose the 30 meter, 80 meter, and 160 meter. But again, remember, this complements my NFED half wave antenna. And I found that if you can get it more than 32 feet or higher, you're going to get better results. Next videos, not necessarily in this order. I'm going to do six ways to send messages within JSA Call. Try to show you some advanced features in that application as well. Uh, VARC updated since it's a new user interface. I figured I would show that because it's a fun program to use if you're look, looking to make contacts. It's got a, you know, a lot of good positive upsides on it. And I'm currently working on the new user interface handout guide right now which should be available shortly, and talk a little bit more about uh, APRS and when and how to use it. Uh, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, thanking you for hitting the like, the subscribe buttons, and all the great comments. I appreciate you guys who support this channel. Thank you so much. So this is Ham Radio, Made Simple, out.